Siberia is one of the coldest regions on Earth. In winter, temperatures drop to minus 70 degrees Celsius. Permafrost covers the region of taiga, tundra, and steppe landscapes extensively. Scientists are making a terrifying discovery under the perpetual ice of Siberia that will change everything. Craters up to 50 meters deep are formed in the ice surfaces by subterranean gas explosions. Some reindeer herders even witnessed flames and smoke rising from a crater after an explosion. The events raise questions that puzzle even experienced scientists. What effects the frightening force of nature will have on the future of the Siberian Arctic has so far remained a mystery. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any crucial news about the dramatic changes in the Arctic. And don't forget to like the video. Leave a comment with your personal assessment of this new challenge that nature presents to us. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most alarming consequences of this new discovery in Siberia. Since 2014, scientists have been observing a mysterious and at the same time worrying phenomena in the permanent ice of Siberia. So far, researchers have discovered 17 round craters with a depth of 20 to 50 meters and a considerable diameter, which were blasted into the frosty ground by underground explosions of Yamal and Gaiden. Mud, debris, and ice have been ejected from the craters, leaving a trail of destruction for hundreds of meters around. During an explosion near a reindeer herder's camp, they could see the flames licking up from a hole that ripped in the ground. Then, smoke rose from it. After the formation of the craters, water surfaces form at the bottom of the craters, which gradually fill up, thanks to which they resemble surrounding lakes over time. But how does it happen so suddenly that such huge craters are formed? Why are such ugly wounds suddenly being torn into the surface of the ice-covered expanses of the almost uninhabited Russian landscape on the Arctic Circle? Scientists have developed the first explanation models for this. Carbon dioxide, or methane, enriched under frost mounds is likely to explode if too high a pressure builds up. Cryovolcanism is a possible cause of the cratering. This type of volcanism rarely occurs on Earth, but is known on other planets and moons in our solar system that experience freezing temperatures. Let's take a closer look at the possible causes of the formation of the craters. Sudden explosions of carbon dioxide or methane or a mixture of both gases beneath the frozen soil of Siberia are thought to be the likely cause of the deep holes that have been ripping through the landscape with tremendous force for the past decade or so. But where do the gases under the ground come from? Carbon dioxide, which is produced when organic substances decompose, is already stored in the soil. One theory assumes that the carbon dioxide alone could be responsible for the cratering. If it is dissolved as carbonic acid in the water in layers of soil that are no longer frozen, this swells up as soon as the water begins to freeze again. The pressure in the still liquid water increases so much that an explosion occurs. Siberian permafrost usually remains frozen year-round. However, if they thaw temporarily due to global warming, the consequences will be devastating. Microorganisms trapped in the ice come to life again and begin to decompose plant residues and other organic substances in the soil in the absence of air. The protozoa release methane gas. Cryovolcanism with ejections of mud, debris, and ice can subsequently occur. Traditional volcanic eruptions are characterized by hot magma working its way through fissures in the rock and escaping the crater as liquid lava. This situation is different with cryovolcanism. It occurs on Earth only at very low temperatures in the permafrost of northern Siberia. A volcanic eruption of this type ejects rocks, mud, and chunks of ice. It is believed that chambers form in the frozen ground that are no longer frozen themselves, but remain enclosed by frozen ground. These so-called talics often form under lakes as the lake water warms the ground, shielding it from the surrounding cold and allowing it to thaw to a certain depth. Microorganisms become active in the talics and excrete carbon dioxide and methane. 
In addition, gases trapped in the lower permafrost rise through the cracks in the ground and collect in the chamber. It becomes dangerous when the lake dries up due to unfavorable climactic influences, because then the warming insulating layer of the lake water falls away. The talic freezes on all sides, causing the gases concentrated in it to condense. When the surrounding ice expands and puts pressure on the talic, it bulges into a hill called the pingo. If the gas pressure inside rises to such an extent that the ice sheet on top of the hill breaks up, rocks, chunks of ice, and mud can be ejected a distance of several hundred meters. The eruptions last for several hours or days. After that, a crater remains at the site of the talic. After some time, this forms into a basin, fills with water, and gradually resembles one of the surrounding natural lakes. There are craters that fill up with water within a few days. These are the ones that are near a river. For others, it takes longer. But after a year or two at the latest, none of the craters are recognizable as a hideous hole, but resemble one of the many lakes around. Experts are unclear how many of the several thousand circular lakes in the Siberian landscape have formed but perhaps over a long period of time, after explosions in craters. Some researchers assume that the phenomena of gas explosions in the permafrost could have been going on for a very long time, but it was only recently that attention was drawn to it. The area used to be less populated than it is today. Now that cities are being founded and more overflights are taking place, the craters are becoming apparent for the first time. So far, the exact cause for the formation of the craters could not be conclusively researched. It is possible that different mechanisms underlie this phenomenon. What is certain, however, is that the gaping holes in the permafrost are a cause for concern. It is not yet possible to assess how the situation will develop in view of the further increase in temperatures on Earth. Based on the current state of scientific knowledge, one can only speculate about possible future effects of this force of nature. Researchers agree that there is a major and unpredictable threat related to gas and oil infrastructure in Siberia. It is fortunate that craters have so far only formed in almost uninhabited regions where there are no large settlements and no gas or oil pipelines. But what if detonations occur in these areas? It is hard to imagine the extent of possible destruction. An explosion is announced only very briefly, if at all. A woman from Siyaka, a small settlement on the Yamal Peninsula, reported that she was so fascinated by the frost mound near her that she visited it every day. On the day it erupted, however, she felt a tremor under her feet and left the place just in time. It is true that some of the already existing frost mounds in Siberia are under observation and are being scientifically examined. Most of them are classified as harmless, but there are probably no early warning systems or evacuation plans in case of further explosions. It is also not possible to estimate exactly where more frost mounds will form in the future and how long they will rest. Many uncertainties and still little knowledge makes this force of nature even more unpredictable than earthquakes or conventional volcanic eruptions. A further increase in temperatures on Earth is causing concern. Increased warming and associated ice melt can contribute to the more frequent explosions. If the ice sheets on the gas-filled mounds melt, this can already be a reason for another explosion. If the ice in the deeper layers of soil melts, gases may more easily find a way up to the talix. Global warming is progressing particularly quickly in the Arctic, which means that permafrost soils are thawing more and in some cases no longer freeze even in the winter months. This is how more and more microorganisms come to life, which decompose organic material and thus enrich the gas concentrations under the soil. This action also increases the risk and likely frequency of further explosions. It seems threatening for the climate that accumulations of methane, which were previously protected under a thick layer of ice, are escaping into the atmosphere to a large extent as a result of the increased ice melt. There, methane is converted into carbon monoxide and finally into climate-damaging carbon dioxide. This would very quickly result in a vicious circle of climate change, ice melt, and even further global warming, from which there may be no escape.
So far, no one can predict how the situation in the Siberian permafrost will develop and how quickly further cratering in the Arctic will progress. It is not foreseeable in which period of time and to what extent harmful climate gases will escape, which are still well protected under the ice sheets in Siberia. But the current situation warns us. It has been known for several years that global warming in the Arctic is progressing twice as fast as in the rest of the world. Experts predict that before 2050, there will be summers in which the Arctic Ocean will be free of ice. This state of affairs is likely to occur regardless of how quickly people around the world reduce emissions of greenhouse gases. It is uncertain whether, after these gloomy forecasts, there will still be time to turn the tide and at least mitigate the consequences of human-caused climate change. In any case, the other threats slumbering under Siberia's ice sheet are no indication that the situation is easing. Strange gas buildup isn't the only thing mysterious that is taking place in Siberia. Recent excavations have uncovered incredible medieval ruins that had previously been lost for hundreds of years. The ruins were found in the Russian Republic of Tuva and look very similar to the monasteries that can be found in China's Forbidden City. Porbaijin roughly translates to mud house and is the name of this strange set of ruins. The ruins can be found in the center of a remote lake in Tuva, located high within the mountains of Siberia, some 32 kilometers from the Mongolian border. We don't know too much about these ruins, but it is believed that they would have been built by the Uyghurs. These were nomadic people who would have ruled over the majority of Mongolia many years ago. Por Baijin is home to at least three hectares of property, with about 30 buildings that are still partially standing. What is so amazing is that some of the walls measure over 40 feet wide and 40 feet high. By all means, these buildings are gigantic. Professor Heinrich Hark is a professional when it comes to remnants of ancient cities. He worked alongside Russian scientists to visit these ruins, and together they did their best to make sense of what they may be. For many years, the buildings were interpreted as being a royal residence or possibly a fortress, though we aren't too sure if this is true. Other theories claim, as mentioned a moment ago, that this could have been used as a monastery. This is due to some of the wood that was found on the site, which some researchers say dates to between 770 AD and 790 AD. They believe the wood and other resources would have been brought over by Chinese residents who may have been using the island at the time. According to Professor Hark, the building is very reminiscent of some of the Chinese buildings that would have been built during the Tang Dynasty, which was between 618 AD and 907 AD. We don't know for sure that the Chinese would have created the structures, but Hark believes that, at the very least, the design was inspired by Chinese buildings, or the Chinese may have helped build it for whoever owned it at the time. Por Baijin is known to have been a place that was plagued by many natural disasters. We know that at least one earthquake struck the area, but it's likely many more would wreak havoc over the coming years. We know this because of the large amount of plaster that was used to try to seal the cracks on the walls of some of the structures. This plaster was little more than a bandage placed on the wall to help with drafts, but the city would finally see its end after a large fire broke out. After the fire claimed most of the buildings in the area, and likely many lives, the area was abandoned and never used again. Considering so few people lived in the area, it's likely the small settlement was overthrown by nearby tribes. In fact, it's entirely possible one of these enemy tribes lit the fire that would see the city brought to its knees. After they left the city, they were exiled from the region entirely and eventually converted to Manichaeism. Though, even though the history of the city may be pretty well documented, many locals in the area claim that the evidence of a highly sophisticated culture that lived in the area many years ago. They say that this settlement shows signs of the Uyghur culture at the earliest stages in its history, leading to it becoming a protected area in more recent years. In fact, Vladimir Putin stopped a hunting expedition that planned on traveling through the area to help preserve its history and reputation. Researchers are extremely interested in continuing their investigation of the area, mostly because they want to learn more about how well preserved the site is, compared to many others that have been found in China over the years.
Thank you for your interest in our video. Before we say goodbye to you this time, we would like to ask you to tell us, how do you assess further developments in the Siberian Arctic? How threatening do the resulting craters appear to you? Share your opinion in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like it and subscribe to our channel.